All right, how we doing? Welcome to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Deepak Chona here. Thanks for checking out our video series. Today we're talking about 15 players with major injury concerns that you need to know about before drafting. But before we do that, if you want a chance to win a signed Keenan Allen Los Angeles Chargers jersey, courtesy of our friends at Pristine Auction, you need to subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel right now, comment below on this video, and that's it. We will be announcing a winner right here on the channel, so make sure to turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes are up and so that you can claim your prize. And now let's dive in. Starting with Michael Thomas, wide receiver for the New Orleans Saints. He's now over one year removed from surgery on an injury that was almost treated non-operatively. The handling, or really mishandling, of this situation cost him all of 2021, but the fact that they tried to treat him without surgery suggests that the injury severity was borderline to begin with. That plus the fact that normal post-surgery recovery takes four to six months, and he's now had over double that time, makes us think he's going to be a fully recovered player. The more recent issue that popped up is a reportedly minor hamstring. Given about three weeks to recover from that makes week one very likely a go, but these preseason hamstring strains do tend to recur once the regular season gets underway. So is Thomas a buy or a sell? At around seven price tag, which is his current ADP on Fantasy Pros, I'm taking that bet all day, expecting mid wide receiver two numbers here. Next up, Chris Godwin, wide receiver for the Tampa Bay Bucks. Hugely productive receiver when he's paired with Tom Brady, but he's now coming off of January ACL surgery. Godwin looks to be progressing well through his rehab, but it also looks like he hasn't yet been cleared for contact practice. That's obviously a key step before he takes the field. Week one still could go either way, but we'd lean towards not seeing Godwin on the field. Beyond availability, performance does dip in year one post ACL for wide receivers as well. The SportsMed Analytics algorithm predicts post-injury outcomes using machine learning on historical NFL injury data and player demographics. Factors like pre-injury production, age, athleticism, even draft stock all come into play here. For Godwin, a productive young receiver with 80th percentile athletic metrics, we're projecting 85% of peak explosiveness in mid-October and 90% in November. That's a very solid player given that he averaged seven receptions per game last year. If we see him play in September, we're anticipating a limited snap count and a player who's not all the way up to 100% of himself. Basically, Godwin is a high risk, high reward proposition for redraft formats at his current round five to six price tag. Moving on to JK Dobbins running back for the Baltimore Ravens. Last time we saw Dobbins, he was averaging over six yards per touch as a rookie but his knee injury was big. He reportedly tore his ACL plus a ligament on the outside of his knee. He's now 13 months into recovery, but average return here actually takes closer to 15. Working in Dobbins' favor are young age, high draft stock, and truly elite athleticism. He actually put up the very highest spark score of any running back prospect coming out of high school just a few years ago. So factoring all of this in, SportsMed Analytics points us to a similar outcome as Chris Godwin. Dobbins should be strong by the midpoint of the year, but if he's out there week one, it's probably on limited touches and less than peak explosiveness. Whether that's worth the risk at ADP in the 40s depends mostly on your roster construction. I like him as a fit for a zero RB strategy early, but you've got to at least consider snagging Mike Davis or Kenyon Drake for insurance in the early weeks here. Next up, we've got a pair of big Achilles injuries, starting with James Robinson running back of the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Achilles has historically been a brutal blow for running backs, and that's why Sports Minute Analytics projects Robinson at only 80% of pre-injury baseline if he does play week one. And what does that look like? Well, for reference, the same data had Cam Akers at 75% when he returned last year, averaging 2.6 yards per carry. The reason for the drop-off has to do with muscle and tendon biology, and the fact that you really need strength in your Achilles to make agile movements on your toes. But as time goes on, Robinson should pick up some of the strength he lost, and he's projected to reach 90% around the halfway point of the season. Still, given a healthy and explosive looking Travis Etienne, it's hard to imagine the Jags forcing the ball to Robinson early this year. Now you are able to get him all the way down around ADP of 110, so he's probably worth a shot at that price, although I definitely would not be banking on him to start in my lineup early on. 
Next, we've got another big Achilles, Cam Akers running back for the Los Angeles Rams. Now, this is very likely the number one running back in a Sean McVay offense, and that in itself draws our interest. But Akers looked terrible last year when he came back, and he was only six months post-surgery. As our analyst Andrew Erickson pointed out, 95% of Akers' yards did come after contact. Basically, the Rams' O-line did him no favors. But yet, in six playoff games, Akers has 21 touches per game. That tells us that McVay trusts him. Data also tells us that volume is the key to predicting points for running backs. So at a round four price tag, Akers was the poster child for a high risk, high reward pick. But now add in an undisclosed soft tissue injury that's severe enough to keep him out of practice for two weeks. Chances are very solid that he'll be ready week one, but I'm passing on him here because that risk that early is a bit too high for my appetite. Moving on to some big time quarterbacks, let's look at Zach Wilson, quarterback for the New York Jets. The second year QB tore his meniscus and had surgery now about two weeks ago. The average return here takes four weeks, and pocket QBs don't tend to see their production impacted much by the injury. The Jets have said he'll only play if he practices before week one, and with a young, potential franchise QB, the Jets obviously aren't going to take any chances. This one needs monitoring, but data suggests Wilson will be out there week one. And now a quick plug for pristineauction.com, the most trusted sports memorabilia auction site. Auctions on pristineauction.com start at just $1, and there are over a thousand autographed items available, so you win signed, authentic signatures at affordable prices. Just last week, an autographed Justin Herbert jersey sold for $110. Deals like this are happening all the time on pristineauction.com, and they have just about every player you could want, including Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, and many, many more. Every item on pristineauction.com comes with a certificate of authenticity from the industry's most reputable authenticators. They also have an iOS app available for download and a marketplace so you don't miss out on the action. Upgrade your collection of signed memorabilia today and get $10 off your first item one when you use the code FANTASY upon sign up. And now let's get back to our list. We've gotten a ton of questions on our next player, Matthew Stafford QB for the Los Angeles Rams. He's got a now chronic elbow issue and he's clearly on a load management plan for it. We'd obviously him rather not have any issues at this point, but there's no indication that he had an actual setback. Furthermore, he was playing through this last postseason at a time when it was probably more symptomatic than it is now. And during those games, Stafford threw the ball about 40 times for 300 yards a game without any obvious performance impact. All things considered, Stafford will probably be able to get through this season without missing time, and I'm not downgrading any of the Rams receivers based on these concerns. Turning our attention next to the top of your draft, we've got to talk about Najee Harris running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Sounds like he's dealing with a grade 2 Liz Frank sprain that he picked up about four weeks ago. Week one will be about six weeks from injury, at which point we'd be expecting him to play without restrictions. In-season durability concerns are low with this injury, but performance usually takes eight weeks to get all the way back to 100%. That would mean around week three for Najee. Now, if you liked him before the injury, this isn't a huge cause for concern, but I was already passing giving the concerns about the rest of the Steelers offense. Moving next to Seattle Seahawks rookie running back Kenneth Walker III, now about three weeks out from surgery on what they're vaguely calling a hernia-like condition. Return to the field usually takes six weeks, so we'll probably see him join the Seahawks around week two or three. The good news is that players do tend to bounce right back to pre-injury form after surgery, so if you liked him before, you're probably still safe to do so now. Next, Jalen Waddle, wide receiver for the Miami Dolphins, has made the news for reasons you do not want to hear. An undisclosed injury has kept him out of practice for about two weeks now, and he's been seen with a wrap on his leg. Most likely, this has little or nothing to do with his prior ankle fracture, and we can feel reasonably good about his durability given that he played in 16 games last year. Although we don't know exactly what's going on, we do know that most of these borderline training camp issues would resolve themselves within four weeks, which is his time frame from injury to week one. Furthermore, coach Mike McDaniel has said he's being highly cautious, suggesting that we don't have huge reason to be worried that Waddle's early season availability is truly in question. Moving now to Eagles running back Miles Sanders. Seeing him on the injury report is unfortunately nothing new, as he has missed nine games over the last two seasons. 
Now he's battling a hamstring strain that's already kept him out two weeks, suggesting it's at least moderate in severity. Having one of these in the preseason does make Sanders statistically more likely to miss time for injury once the regular season kicks off. Add that to a pretty deep committee backfield structure in Philly, and Sanders is basically out of the picture for me, despite the fact that he'll probably be available week one. Next up is another familiar name from the injury report, Juju Smith-Schuster, wide receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs. It's hard not to be intrigued by a speedster teaming up with Patrick Mahomes after Tyreek Hill's departure here. But Juju has been injured in the past and he's missed practices recently due to knee soreness. So how concerned are we? Not very. He has returned to practice and if you look at his injury history in detail, the last time he missed games due to a knee issue was 2019. That suggests that this is probably an isolated sprain or strain rather than a repetitively injured weak spot that is popping up again. Overall, we'd feel relatively safe betting on Juju here. Up next, one of our favorite dynasty targets, Detroit Lions rookie wide receiver, Jamison Williams. Pre-injury, he was drawing comparisons to the likes of Tyree Kill, but then of course, he tore his ACL and now he's officially on the non-football injury list, making him ineligible for the first four weeks of the season. But it's important to note that this is not a setback. Rather, with a January ACL, it's completely within expectations. Average return timelines take 10 to 11 months for wide receivers, but factoring in young age and mega elite athleticism, Sportsmed Analytics projects his return closer to nine months. But that ACL performance dip we talked about with Godwin also applies here, and it's the reason our algorithm projects Jamison not hitting 90% until mid-November. For redraft leagues, that's pretty deep into the season to be hanging on to a player who you're not able to reliably start. But for Dynasty, considering the fact that he's likely to be nearly 100% by the end of this season, Jamison Williams is a potential value opportunity there. Next, first round rookie wide receiver Drake London of the Atlanta Falcons has also been on the injury report. He's been out for over two weeks after getting hit on the knee. Sounds like he's dealing with a mild severity contusion, which should heal up given another two weeks to go before the regular season. Coach Arthur Smith would not commit to anything, but we'd certainly expect London to be out there week one, and this isn't the type of issue we'd expect to pop back up mid-season. And finally, last but not least, Commander's rookie running back Brian Robinson. We're first of all thankful for his safety, and from a football perspective, it does sound relatively promising. He sustained gunshots to his lower leg and glute, but based on the rapid discharge from the hospital, it sounds like there was no nerve, bone, or joint injured, and that's great news. I'd anticipate his potential return taking about two or three months. Again, football is not the top priority in Robinson's case, but we're certainly glad to see him potentially on the mend and likely returning in November. And that does it for this edition of the 15 injuries you must know about before drafting. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, if you want a chance to win that signed Keenan Allen Los Angeles Chargers jersey, courtesy of our friends at Pristine Auction, you need to subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel right now. Comment below on this video. And that's it. We'll be announcing a winner right here on the channel, so make sure to turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes are up and you can claim your prize. See you next time. Deepak Chona signing off. Thanks for tuning in to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out our featured videos. And while you're at it, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Fantasy Pros so you can get the latest news and updates to give you the edge you need in your fantasy league.